And now to our conversation this hour. Chief of Staff to President Bola Tinobu Femi Bajabia Mila says social media has become societal menace that should be regulated. Well, the former Speaker of the House of Representatives said this while representing the President at the book launch of former Minister of Works, Babatunde Fashola, last week. The subject of social media regulation persisted throughout the administration of former President Mohamedou Buhari, with the former Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, repeatedly making a case for the regulation of the social media space in Nigeria. Meanwhile, Amnesty International has condemned social media regulation proposed by Nigerian leaders, saying the government can jail its critics for as long as three years if such laws, uh, if such becomes a law. It also said the government can shut down the internet or limit access if it succeeds in regulating social media. I remember as speaker, when I was speaker, I attempted to do this. The Ninth Assembly attempted, but we were resisted very vigorously by civil society. I guess the chicken have come home to roost, and I believe we're all on the same page now, that social media is a menace, and it must be regulated. So what do you think? Should the federal government regulate social media? I'm joined by media and communication analyst, Adesha Nayomide, who joins live from the UK. And in our Abuja studio is social commentator, Kemi Ashekun. Uh, popularly called Kem Kem on um, X. The debate is on. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on the program. Let's begin from our Abuja studio. Um, so the chief of staff comment last week brought this conversation again to the front burner. Uh, following is um, uh, while he was reminiscing on what transpired in the Ninth Assembly and uh, the attempt of the lawmakers at the time to regulate social media. Do you agree with him, though, that social media is a menace that must be regulated? Well, I think it's a case of semantics. Um, I would say that social media can be a menace. Um, you cannot entirely say that it is a menace, but it can be a menace, especially because there are people who do not understand the rules of engagement, right, of how to even be... Uh, respectful as, social, as, as interactions between humans you know, should expect. That there should be some form of um, respectful communication, some form of politeness. But um, what we see today is like a jungle of sorts where you have all sorts of people you know, seeing it as an opportunity to tear down, bully, or um, you know, insult people. And one of the things I have always said in the past is that as a people evolve, so must their laws. At the time we had the communication laws that we had in Nigeria, for example, um, we did not have social media. We did not know it would become this way. We did not know that virtually everybody with access to you know, a device right, can you know, speak to every other person and can talk to them. You know, and then we did also not factor into, the, into it the fact that some people can now hide um, you know, behind the, 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 the social media to perpetrate all sorts of um, infamy you know, against other people. I saw on social media last week someone um, threatening a journalist whose father was murdered you know, with the fact that she will be murdered too. And if you have a thing like that, then you must say that it should be regulated. It may not be in entirety a menace because it has democratized the communication space, but indeed, we, have, we need the kind of laws that will bend um, the mischief makers who want to use it as an opportunity to threaten, to bully, to hurt, and to insult other people. That's, that's my take on that. Absolutely. Uh, but what do you think of um, the conversations around, you know, the the political bias of the incumbent government, because this is not just something that is unique to the Tinubu administration. Uh, the Buhari administration also attempted this, you know, um, in its second term in office. Do you think that um, there is understanding on the part of social media users in Nigeria, you know, for the kind of points that the chief of staff was making last week? Well, well, the thing is, understanding is one thing, responsibility is another thing. 
There is nowhere in the world where you just go all out and insult people, threaten them, bully them, you know, that it becomes acceptable. Whether the people understand it or not, I think that the basic norms of a society, you know, push for the fact that if you're going to engage anyone, be polite. That's the least you can ask for. Or be polite, be, be, be respectful. You can make your points without necessarily insulting, right? With regards to the government, um, you would agree with me that um, the internet over the years has become cheaper. The Android phones over the years have become more available. And so if the buck falls on the table, right, of the present government to do something about it, it will be foolhardy to say, oh, it's because they are the present government in office. That's just going to be a joke, right? We need, to have, we need to have people understand that you cannot continue like this. Right. There is um, there are laws in India. I, uh, India is a democratic um, nation, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I believe. Right. And they have had social media media regulation in the last two years. If it's false, delete immediately. And if, if, if um, you know, it has been found to do something or the other, you pull it down, you know, or you'll be held responsible. I recall the chief of staff to the president was saying that who should be held responsible, the purveyor of the news or those who believe it. We must remember that we still live in a society where people believe that whatever you see on the media is truth. And sometimes, even for media practitioners, a lot of the times you have to sit down and ask yourself, no, but this cannot be true. You have to second guess it, right? And then you have the gullible people. So you have a, what we have on social media today is a case of the gullible meeting the mischievous. And so a mischievous person throws out something, the gullible swallow it, then the gullible run with it as if that is the truth. And of course, there's that saying that says that um, the, 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 a lie runs around the world before the truth is able to um, you know, wear its pants and catch up with it. A lot of times the truth is not usually able to. So if people will not be responsible in themselves to do the right thing or be truthful with what they're going to post on social media, then of course it means that laws have to be put in place to put them in check. Prince Adeshina has joined us from London. Um, Prince, you have um, quite a number of people also following on X, I think over 20,000. You heard Kem Kem say that is a situation of the mischievous taking advantage of the gullible. Do you think that um, managing or regulating the social media space is the way forward, um, given some of the unpalatable uh, experiences we've had in recent years? Uh, thank you. It's nice to join you on the program this evening. Um, firstly, um, these debates, these be, uh, they've been on it, I think, since 2019. And um, I think it's for the benefit of all. And um, it's just like, it's not only really trying to regulate social media, it's just an, an act or a bill, let me call it a bill, that's it's just to protect uh, falsehood, manipulation, and to counter fake news, you know? Someone can just wake up in one day and say, so, so people embezzled money, whereas it's false. So, and I think we all want a better country for ourselves, and uh, we always think of European countries that they are doing this, let us eliminate them, they are doing this, let us eliminate them. But when it comes to this bill, I think people have a counter opinion. And I think we need to let people know that this is just a, a, an instance that is not really targeted on freedom of expression. It's just that you don't need to put something that is false on media. Just because you have a freedom of expression, you have access to internet, you can just bring your phone and put something that is not really good. Actually, let me just be sincere. If they pass the bill to our law since 2019, probably someone like him will have been jailed as well because we are, one of the times I've tried to copy some news that I, realize, that I later realized that is false. You know, in news writing and reporting, when a reporter goes to get news, he or she will submit to the sub-editor they will check the grammatical errors. They will check error of contradictions. They will check the facts. So, and also you to get to editor, before now finally get to chief editor, that's to tell you that 
the the importance of 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 facts or truth has a lot of impact in people's life. And um, if you are comparing Nigeria to the United States of America, comparing Nigeria to Germany, comparing Nigeria to United Kingdom, then we shouldn't have the discussion about this because on this country they also re regulated their social media. Yeah, that yeah. is why it's quite difficult for for anyone living in the United Kingdom to just wake up and publish something that is not real. I hear you clearly. So, let's return to Abuja. You know, um, Kem Kem, when we talk about regulating social media, are we also cognizant of the fact that um, even in countries where you don't have access to this app, people bypass these limitations through the use of VPN? Um, do you think this regulation will, will be enough strategy to stop this menace? Well, for the regulation to start in the first place, there has to be a framework that will be, you know, agreed upon with all the parties involved or all the parties, all the interested parties, right? Um, of course, the VPN comes in as in other countries uh, where, um, you know, where some of the social media laws are in place. But we must not forget that the VPN in itself is a gate, right? It's one step, you know. Not everybody's going to use a VPN, and not everybody is going to be interested in using a VPN. So already, that is a gate. That, that already closes. But in the countries you're mentioning, for example, these are countries where, uh, you know, they, they may not necessarily be democratic states. The social media law, I do not know in which format it will take, but at least it should take the, the part of the, um, uh, the part where it says responsible. Whatever you post, be responsible for it. There's a common saying that says that there is freedom of speech, but freedom after speech cannot be guaranteed because, of course, to whom a brain is given, sense is expected. It's expected that before you spew or write or type whatever it is you want to do, right, that one of the first things that you do is to double check and be sure that it's not going to hurt anybody. And this is where I think the Rotarian um, four-way test comes out. Is it true? Is it... Um, you know, okay, I remember, is it true? Is it fair to all? And all of that. Those are some of the things that people have to put in place, right, before they decide to share certain things. People have died, you know, just by getting bullied on social media. And it's interesting that the um, chief of staff to Mr. President actually um, said this thing at um, Honorable Babatunde Fashola's book lunch, right? And because I recall that sometime last year, uh, for example, um, some people who um, claims that uh, the, the, the former minister and former governor was involved in certain things with regards to the Supreme Court judgment, right? There was, you know, the, there was a court order against them because you cannot defame people. You cannot just wake up one day, cook up something, and like I said, mischievously cook up something for the gullible and expect that whoever is at the receiving end should just take it as it is, right? Mm. What I believe we're clamoring for is more responsible use of social media, not that people just go in there and think that they can say anything to anybody, right, or insult anybody, abuse anybody, or, or claim, you know, what is false. Look at the issue of the gist lover thing in recent times, right? You have people who have become bullied into silence, you know, by, by some of these people who use social media uh, uh, irresponsibly. So as far as I am concerned, I believe that as a people evolve, so must their rules, so must their laws, and... The social media was not there when we had certain laws in place. Those laws are possibly, you know, for, for, for the general communication um, issues that we used to have. But with the advent of social media and with the way people have started using it, especially because these days people can just wake up. Anybody can wake up and type something and start to share. Unfortunately, I hear you. people start I hear to you, believe. Kim, Kim. You talked about the need for multi-stakeholder engagement, you know, to be able to see this fly. But recall that in 2021, the Buhari administration actually banned Twitter and the reaction was massive. Not quite a number of people supported that decision. How do you draw the line? If you follow the reaction, for instance, from Amnesty International, Amnesty International is saying that um, critics of government could be imprisoned for up to three years you know, um, if this bill sees the light of the day. What kind of a bill is that that gags people from saying the truth to government? Because this is the point where many Nigerians are also considering. Uh, Twitter is alive, X is alive today because you can bear your mind. 
you probably have as many people following you today because you can bear your mind. The moment we begin to tow this path, you know, you turn us all into a robot saying yes, sir, to every decision you make. So talk to us about the way forward in such a way that this doesn't turn, turn out to be a gag on um, free speech. Okay, uh, like I said earlier, Ray, um, it doesn't have to be a gag. It just has to be respectful engagement, right? I did say that, yes, there has to be some form of respectful, um, some form of engagement, a framework that works. I don't believe that uh, the current president, right, will be interested in gagging people because throughout his own democratic, uh, throughout his own years as a Democrat, right, he's been one who has always spoke, uh, spoken up, right? So I, I think that it will be grossly unfair to think about him in, you know, along those lines as someone who may want to gag the people. No, um, that's not who uh, the president, Ashwad Bola Metinubu, represents. If you recall, back in the days from the June 12th struggle all the way to the days of um, um, Chief Olusha Gomba Sonjo and all of that, he's been someone who has spoken up for the common man. So the last thing on his mind will be to actually gag the people. However, to whom you know, um, to whom freedom is given, responsibility is also expected. That's the part of it that our people need to come together to agree about. We cannot continue like this. If, you, if, if, we, take, if we leave social media to continue the way it is going, we'll wake up one day and the, the country will be set ablaze. And I think that that is what we all are striving to, present, uh, sorry, to prevent and to protect. We're striving to have a country where you can engage the government. Nobody's saying you should not engage the government. And I will come to Amnesty International in a bit, right? Nobody is saying you cannot uh, engage the government. But you can engage the government without being, uh, what do you call it, without, without, without trying to attack, you know, the essence of what we represent as a country. And I think that's where the difference is. Um, there are days that I also, you know, would say, no, this is not working well. This is not looking the way it should. But there are ways to put down these things without necessarily seem like you are trying to set the country ablaze, right? Um, for example, uh, I would say that the, Mr. President in himself has a right as his own human right. So for everyone who's gone about saying all sorts of, um, making all sorts of accusations against him, I would say that they should come out with proof. And if they're not coming out with proof, then he should exercise his own human rights to say, well, you've accused me falsely. Can we go to the courts to prove what you have said? And that's the one thing, yeah, you, uh, um, you know, social media has, has, we've not been able to uh, iron out on social media. Don't forget also that there are people across the world, hundreds of millions of people across the world, who believe what they see Nigerians post about Nigeria on social media. And I can tell you for real, this has in many ways diminished us as Nigerians and diminished Nigeria as a whole before the rest of the world. These are some of the you. things that we need to we, we, know, we, uh, 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 work on. These are some of the things we need to protect. Run out of right? These are some of the things we need to engage so our people about and make, make them understand that in. on the social media, you, you are on me. the world stage. And for everything you say yes. about Nigeria... All right, let's um, bring in Prince Adeshino quickly. Let me understand what is on the mind of content creators, especially Nigerians abroad, because many of you are guilty of that. Uh, you know, X is paying for engagement now, and then everyone is tempted to post the most controversial content to get the likes and the engagement so that, you know, Elon Musk can pay them. <laughs> Perhaps you can speak on behalf of content creators and how you think they think and how that can, you know, change the narrative back at home. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think we've been experiencing this uh, more of fake news, more of manipulations on internet ever since Elon Musk started being content creators. Mm. And I think after they've, they've, they've earned some engagements like views, like having 2 million views on a post, they can now just get like, oh, I'm so sorry, like this kind of post that I made I, is actually false. And you know that Social media is just like um, an epidemic theory, like a bullet theory, whereby it has a very great influence on people. Like the moment you post something, people cannot even try to fact check whether what you post is actually genuine. They will just react on it. We've have a lot of we've had a lot of instances 
that's, that, that, that this has tried to, to set up place our country, especially during this uh, Edsas era, they published a, a, a picture of one actress that she's dead. And the person is in her house, enjoying life. They said, she's dead. And they said, ah, why? I'm in my own house. Why, why are you people doing this to me? So now, in the UK, we don't really have that kind of, uh, of, 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 of sin. Like, people just wake up to create some, 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 some news just to trash people or just to bring the country down. No, they don't do that here. So what they do here, you know, even take for instance, if you try to create a Twitter account or even a Facebook or Instagram, and um, you will abide by their rules and regulations, you understand? And also, if you, publish, okay, most especially during this COVID-19 of a thing, like Facebook and um, all these, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter try something that when you, when you, when you publish something that is about COVID-19 and it's not genuine, they will flag it. That's to tell you that it has a great impact on people's lives. So if all these media pl platform could think of something like that, now, I think um, um, TikTok owner and um, Mark Zuberger, they are facing a lot of, a lot of criticism from the, from the United US States right now. Absolutely. From the United States because of, the, of, the, of some content that, that some kids, teenagers, see on social media and try to act on it and they commit suicide. So they are facing a lot of a lot of this kind of minas in the outside. Absolutely. Well. I hear but you the fact that the United States of America, or but the fact that the United States of America mm -hmm. regulated their social media bill, you can still a lot of people have seen some content that is not really good, that is making them to misbehave. Mm -hmm. Now our own country, people are pushing some false narrative to gain engagement to get enormous money. Yeah, they are not doing so to get money. Indeed. You understand? I hear but you. it's having a lot of side effects. Or some teenagers like watching it seems that Absolutely. maybe they are, if you're trying to play with a knife it's they can just use it to kill themselves and they said they said they said they said that's, they said, that's unfortunately an argument. how much we can go on the show we'll possibly you know continue this conversation on x and you know just use the hashtag beyond 100 days and remember to tag, uh, uh, tag Prince Adesino and Kem Kem, and then we can have this conversation. Thank you so much for your contribution. Prince Adesino joined us live from London. Kemi Ashekon live from Arabuja Studio in Spain. A very interesting conversation. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of it. You can watch it again at midnight and at 